Spit raps like a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and pass. I back up my actions. Back to Nas. Hey guys, Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today I'm here with my man Kevin. Kevin, how old are you? 36. Dude, guys, check this out. 36 years old. Um, number one, he's got a super cool story. It's going to bring a lot of value to a lot of you. You're going to be like, dude, all right, this is my time. I need to take action after hearing what he's going to talk about. But uh, built a kick-ass hotel, man. Uh, sold it, exited, did really well. Now he coaches and, and, and helps uh, hotels grow and build like, like his company did. And he loves it. His wife's here. She's super hot. He married up big time. Uh, but they're recreating every day. They're changing their life. They, they're, they're the definition of self-development and helping other people. They have got hearts of gold. They're good friends of mine. Uh, so thank you for being here with me, man. You, I'm, I'm super proud of you. Uh, but most importantly, man, is um, real quick, 30-second conversation. What are you guys doing today? And then I want to go back to day one. Yeah, so for anyone who is maybe in the Airbnb game, real estate space, and hotels, especially independent boutique hotels, mm -hmm. we're in the service industry, hospitality industry, and we help those people with their businesses. What we found right now is hospitality is broken, right? Think of the last time you went to a hotel or an Airbnb, stuff isn't where you think it should be, the staff isn't responding to you, whatever the horror stories that you hear right now, maybe the staff isn't kind to you. And, and so what we find in hospitality right now is that they need to be coached. Mm -hmm. They need to be, the leaders of the hotels need to be coached on how to be self-aware. They need to coach their teams and then they need to have more effective operations. So we do three things with Hotel Accelerator right now. One, we help hotels make more money. Mm -hmm. Two, we help them keep more money. And three, we help them build the best teams that they've ever had. Yeah, so it's real simple, guys. You open a business to make money. Okay, that's the number one reason why you do it. You get in Airbnbs, you get into boutique hotels, you get into any of this to make money. And a lot of people, they have these things or they've invested money and then it's not making the return that they thought. Yeah. And so what he does is he helps him create that return because he has that going on in his life now and he's exited a large company that built that and then sold it. So yeah, he's got, super smart. We, we've got people that are just, that are going for the first hotel. Like we, we took a, a, a couple sisters that wanted to build the hotel of their dreams and they spent a year spinning their wheels because they couldn't couldn't get it off the ground. We come in within a few months, boom, we've acquired their hotel. We help them put in the operations. They're about to do their grand opening. So that's the effectiveness of, of when we come in, we help you develop not only yourself and your teams, but actually get your operation off the ground and make it profitable. Yeah. And what I love, dude, is this guy cares. Like him and his wife are just super cool. So um, let's, let's start where obviously that's where you're at today. You're killing it. You're crushing it. You know, you're rocking and rolling, man. You love what you do. You're crazy. You guys moved out to Scottsdale, Arizona to be close to us. You're not afraid of risk. You're not afraid of nothing. But let, let's go back to like, and, and I, we're going to get up to that. Yeah, and We're going to lead back up. That, that's right. You got to you gotta be, we talk about being a little bit psycho, right? And that's something mm -hmm. that we talk about. Yeah. And, and you got to be willing to do that. And, and we were, even though we just had a multi-million dollar exit from one of the hotels that we own, mm -hmm. we were still, we wanted to find another level within ourselves. Because mm -hmm. I won't tell people to do what to do without having done it myself. Mm, that's right? a good leader. So- Julia and I came out to Scottsdale. We literally, we met you. We met a bunch of entrepreneurs out here in Scottsdale. We knew this is the place that we needed to set our roots and foundation for getting to the next level where we wanted to go. So we literally, and this is bringing us to present day, but two months ago, we came out here, met you guys. We were here for 12 hours and we move fast mm -hmm. when we know what we want and when we see an opportunity. Winners are decisive. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so 12 hours, we go to sleep. We have an Airbnb. We go to sleep. We wake up the next morning. We meet a couple guys from your team. We call the landlord. We say, hey, we want the house for a year. By noon the next day, we haven't even been here 24 hours. We have a house here for the year. I love it. Then we meet you that weekend, and then we go home, we pack our car, and we drive across the country. The last two months, we've been helping people all across the country. We've even had, had people from Europe reaching out to us to help us with their hotels. So that's how quickly being a little psycho can move things. Yeah, well, you, when, you get, when you're serious, people take you serious. That's right. It's pretty cool, right? That's right. And you're increasing your marriage. You're making that better. You guys are becoming better people. You always had a good marriage, probably better than most. But at the end of the day, there's levels to this game. That's right. And, you know, you, when you talk about when we say psycho and crazy, I want everybody to understand this. If you take any successful person and you crack them open, you're going to see that they're built different. These people make decisions quicker. They move quicker. They act quicker. Um, so if you just have taken a few notes in the beginning, it's like, dude, if you want something, like go all in. Right. Like when you have to think about something, that means you're thinking whether you're worth it. You're thinking whether you have what it takes. And then most people become paralyzed of fear and they don't do anything. OK, that's why most people stay the same. Guys, Andy Elliott, listen, if you're interested in real estate investing, I've got the Hustle Summit 
It's gonna be June 1st. It's gonna be in Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys know where I live. Now this event's gonna be one day. It's gonna be super simple. I've got a boy in mind. His name's Eric Klein. He's built about four eight-figure businesses. And right now, he's teaching people how to do wholesale real estate and make 100 grand a month. You guys just text the number below. I'll get you information on the tickets. I'd love to get close to you. I will be here. I'll meet all of you. I'll be speaking to you. Text the number below. I'll get you the information. Let's kill it. So I love it that you and your wife are action takers. Um, super cool. So yeah. tell us a little bit about like growing up. Where'd you come from? Yeah. You know, let's talk about some life lessons. You know, yeah. how long you met your wife. I mean, let's talk about all this. Like, I, yeah. I want to learn a little bit about you. And the question is, because like, how do we get here? But but where we are now, you got to look back and connect the dots from where we came from, where I came from the last 36 years. Let's I grew up. I grew up in New Jersey, just outside of Philadelphia. I grew up in a you know a, a middle class family. My, my parents' parents grew up dirt poor, grew up in Mississippi, mm -hmm. uh, so not too far from Oklahoma, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and they found their way up to Philadelphia and New Jersey. And, you know, my parents grinded, you know, they're in sales, they're, they're teachers, and they just wanted to create a life for us. Mm -hmm. But growing up, that was great. And I had a kick-ass work mentality when I was, and that was instilled to me when mm -hmm. I was That's in good. grade school, right? So every weekend we owned a car wash. So I'd go and wash cars and hand out flyers. I'd get up at five in the morning on Saturdays and my friends were you know, messing around and doing whatever yeah. they're doing on and Friday nights. 5 a.m. on Saturdays, I would take a stack of 2,000 flyers. I put my name on the back of them so I knew that it was mine. And I'd go to apartment complexes and put them on the windshields mm. of cars. So, and it was fun all day I would stand. Did your dad give you bonuses if you knew that it was yours? No, I, cause I didn't care about the money. And yeah. that's how I've always been. I just want to know that. I just wanted to know that those twenty flowers are mine, and no one. And my brother got less. That's all I wanted. To know. Um, <laughs> I like that competitive. Edge. That's right. That's right. So, so you know, I grew up. I grew up hustling and and working in the family business, but I always, I've always known that there was more, and that that I want to touch a lot of people and have an impact. That's just how I was built, and so. I didn't know wealthy people. I didn't know super successful people, the kind of people that we get to be in proximity to now. I didn't, I didn't know that when I was growing up. I didn't know that. I didn't really know that. I knew it existed, but I didn't know anyone in that space. Seemed like you had good parents, so they taught you to work hard. I did. They, they yeah. gave, they super gave me, good. they gave me the ethics, the morals, the, the hard work. Mm -hmm. But to get to the next level mm -hmm. and where I wanted to go, it's. It's what are the beliefs, what are the skills, what are the things that you need to ingrain within yourself to get there? And for me, this is a, you know, probably a 20 year journey mm -hmm. of, of finding that. So I went, I was a, a, a division one swimmer. I was a, you know, nationally, national caliber swimmer at the University of Maryland. I did that for four years. I trained for two years after that for the Olympic trials. While I was training for the Olympic trials, I worked at the car wash, mm -hmm. turned that around, sold that. And at the same time, while I was doing training for Olympic trials, running the family business after undergrad, I saw that the successful people that I knew, because I saw them in movies, they're on Wall Street. And so I knew that I had to get there. Mm. So I worked my butt off for three years, because I'm not the smartest kid, but I am the hardest working kid. Mm -hmm. So I worked my butt off to get my scores up on my tests so I could get into a top dragon law school and then get onto Wall Street. because I. That's all I knew. That was the only path. You had to go to the best school. You had to go to Harvard, Penn, NYU to get to Wall Street. So I ended up going to Penn and, and I ended up getting to Wall Street as a lawyer. How old and are I worked, you? And now I'm 27 years old. Got it. And I worked for three years for the investment banks, for the major players, you know, all the, all the people that you, that you would recognize. And I did that for three years and, and, the thing is, is that's, that's when I learned a really important lesson in my life, which is people might have wealth, but we talk about getting it all. Mm -hmm. and, and what I realized is that my mentors and the people ahead of me at that point in my career were not people that I necessarily looked up to. Yes, maybe they were some, they were some of the smartest, hardest working people, but what were their relationships like? What was their family life like? I saw divorce, I saw drugs, I saw working till, till you're completely burnt out six and a half, seven days a week. And I knew that this wasn't for me and it was soulless, right? The, the huge billions of dollars. I think I counted up, I transacted and closed at my law firm. I closed over $15 billion in deals in three years, mm -hmm. but it was soulless and I didn't feel connected to anything. And I started traveling. I've always loved real estate and 
I really loved hotels. I really loved going to a good hotel. And I knew that I wanted to get into, pivot my career and get into a place where I could impact people, where I could mm -hmm. touch people. I think that's a lot, why a lot of, you know, the hospitality industry is a trillion dollar industry. And I think a lot of the reason that a lot of us are in that industry is because you get to touch people. Yep. You get to work with them directly. You just want to help people. Yeah, help people, their best, the best times of their lives, right? And so I had to make that transition, but after three years, I didn't have that much money saved. We would just go out and blow it at the clubs. I like what you said. You said in the best times of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Best times of their lives. Yeah, Some like, of the best moments. Yeah. Because they're on vacation. They're That's traveling. Right. They got their family. Yeah. That's good. I like that. In the yeah. best times of their lives. That's good. And, and so. Because and, that, that really helps you understand what you're doing, your why. Like right. we're here to make this special for them. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Keep going. Yeah. And, and. I knew I wanted to make that transition, but but here comes the next turning point, right? Is you spend, for myself, I spent six years getting to Wall Street, three years on Wall Street. So this is nine, this is almost, this is all of my 20s that I've, this is a season of nine years of mm -hmm. my life. And I'm making six figures. Yeah, but you're like, this is what you thought you wanted. And this is what I always thought I wanted. Yeah, I love what, that you said soulless. Yeah. I think, I think uh, maybe some people got that. But when you say soulless, um, the goal in life is to achieve and be fulfilled. That's right. Yeah. So if you only get one, if you make a lot of money, but you don't find fulfillment, yeah. you're going to end up hating yourself. Yeah. And then if you make achievement and, you know, and you do well, or, or even if you get fulfilled and you have, a, you know, you, you love what you do, but you don't make any money, you're broke. I mean, how, Andy, how many times have you, even people just, just in this, in this area, have you seen they, they might be in real estate, they could be in sales, and they have financial wealth. And they're miserable. And they're miserable. Oh, I see it every day. Yeah. Our number one call that I get is from people that have worked for 15 or 20 years, and they literally call and they say, I just don't like me. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, I have a good way of just connecting, and a lot of people just say, I just don't like me. Like, like I got the money. And by the way, like, my wife doesn't look up to anymore, you know, and me anymore. Um, she's not even in love with me anymore. Um, my kids don't admire, like, they're not, I'm not their hero. Uh, I'm out of shape. Um, they had a guy here last night, you know, he's a, he's a, he was a triathlon. Yeah. You know, and uh, he's 350 pounds now. Yeah. And he goes, dude, after chasing business for 15 years and shoveling down everything that I can get, it's like, it's like, I hate me. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, so I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, we, we even, we got recently to hang out with and hear, and hear speak Steve Weatherford. Oh, he's so cool. Yeah, and he's, he's such a cool guy. And, and I want to stay close to that guy mm -hmm. because his he's story is unbelievable. And, and he epitomizes getting to the pinnacle of, he won his NFL Super Bowl. You know, he, he hit, hit one of the best kicks of his careers. He's jacked. Yeah, great body. He's making great money. Money, everything. And and what was it? He was miserable. Yep, he still had a hole in his heart. Yeah. Yeah, so I love that. So when you said soulless, I, like, yeah. I got that. So you start yeah. pursuing. So so I know I want to transition careers, but it's hard, right? They talk about on Wall Street or in other careers, the golden handcuffs. Mm -hmm. how, how do you leave uh, something that you've spent a nine-year season on, you're making six figures? Yep. But that's probably the, the first time in my life where I had that cycle mentality where I was like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. And, that's when and, you actually started living. And that's when your parents are like, what are you doing? Right. Mm -hmm. what, you're going to give that up. Or your friends are like, dude, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. now, you've heard this. Yeah. Yeah. I got made fun of so hard. Yeah. So, but I love it. I love watching yeah. you get made fun of. Yeah. I love it. So it's my favorite thing to watch as people go to their best life. Yeah. Is to see them. Well, you're not getting tortured, but to see everybody try to torture you. That's right. Uh huh. Because when you go after your best life, people that have put boundaries on you, yeah, yeah, you didn't put boundaries on you. You've always known that you were capable. And finally, when you believe enough in yourself to go do it, they put boundaries on you, and they put boundaries on themselves. Yeah. And when they see you going outside those boundaries, they don't like it. And, and that's that's what must that's what how you know it's not it's not our fault. It's no one's no one's fault per se. I mean, when we're little kid, when we're little baby toddlers, 
you know, you have, what boundaries do you have? You have none. And then as you get older, you just have boundaries put on you. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you guys hear my man, Kevin, telling his story, you're like, man, dude, this guy's crushing it. He's killing it. He's going to new levels. Um, how do I, how do I get close to him? Well, number one, you guys see the number below guys, just shoot him a text message. What I love about a lot of my friends is that like, they don't mind you texting them and then actually talking about like what's next in business for you guys. Okay. He's a great coach. He's kicking ass, man. And I just love to see him taking over the world. I know it's your time to take over the world. So you guys can shoot him a text message. Look, I got your back for life. I love you guys. If you want to connect with him, there's the number. Let's get back to the video. When you're young, you could tell everybody whatever you wanted to do, and they were like, dude, good job. That's so cool. We're so proud of you. Right. Then as you get older, they start calling you stupid. Right. Yeah. Right. Why are you doing that? Well, but I'm glad you did. So let's so, so you, you so do I lead, this, you take the heat, you pursue this new uh, I have an opportunity to buy my first property. It's actually the one that we just sold. I had the opportunity to buy it. It was brought to me. I've been in the Airbnb business before Airbnb existed. Mm -hmm. I started in real estate and Airbnb as a side hustle. Mm -hmm. Before I I got into into law and to Wall Street, I did this as a side hustle for now 18 years and you got lots of experience yeah and mm -hmm. so it, i've i've been in the short-term rental hotel business now for almost 20 years because i started when i was 17. and i had an opportunity to acquire a hotel so this is taking things to a whole new level for me but the reason i had the opportunity was because it was my first property was full of hookers and drugs and it looked terrible and even the families that lived on that block, they actually came and told me that they had told all their children to walk on the other side of the street and not go past this property. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity to buy it for a great price, but it was right off the beach. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it's a great location. And that's rule number one of real estate. Yeah, location. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. So I acquired this property and I don't know what I want to do with it, but over time I figure out that I'm going to, it's a motel. I end up going in, in the first week that I owned it, I didn't have any capital. I didn't want to go raise money because I didn't have the belief or conviction that I could make other people money. So I was like, I'm going to do it with my own money. I barely had any money. I had enough money just to live for mm -hmm. several months, but I had a credit card. So I buy this property. I got a hundred percent financing from the owner cause he just wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And I had a credit card and I maxed out the credit card to fix up the hotel, to, to get rid of all the filth and to clean it and to put in new furniture. Mm -hmm. And at this time, Airbnb started becoming a big thing. And I was the first one in my market. We talked about moving fast and taking mm -hmm. advantage Early of opportunities. Yep. Well, no, no one, no one in this market was on Airbnb. No one, most people hadn't heard of it. This is seven years ago. I love it. And so, and so I, I put it on Airbnb and immediately within one week of owning this hotel, I rented a U-Haul. I went and maxed out the credit card to go fix it up in a couple of weeks. And I put it on Airbnb and with one week, one within one week, we were cash flowing on this building. And so that was like, wow. And three months later, we had done double what the previous owner had done in a year. And wow. Oh, wow, there's some, there's something to this. Yeah. And this started to get addicted. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I saw this business opportunity and, and I loved this industry. I loved being able to, we had all kinds of cool people coming from all over the place. And at this time, this was early Airbnb when the people traveling on Airbnb were like people that were hip, that wanted to experience these cool, like cool places to stay. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were. We just, we made it hip. We made it fun. We did, I did everything that I could with it. And then we end up coming back a year later after after proving the model and, and more than doubling the revenue of the building in, in six months. We come back and we renovate it and we launch what would become our hotel company, Shorehouse Hotels. And in three years, we'd acquire, we'd acquire another, a larger hotel. And so now I had two hotels. I started with nothing. I started with zero hotel experience. I started with no money. And now three years in, I have two hotels. Mm. And that hotel we just exited and that was a multi-million dollar profit. And, and that was life-changing for me. But now we have a period of six years where I have to run hotels. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing here is that running hotels is not easy. You have to build a team. You have to deal with thousands of customers coming in, paying a lot of money, trying wanting to experience the 
like we had talked about the, the some of the best moments of their lives. We have people getting engaged, people having weddings, people having birthdays, anniversaries. Mm -hmm. And and so we we learned this business and how to be, and we built it from the ground up. See, I had no mentors, I had no coaches when I when I did this. I just did it out of what I knew and the resources that I could find, and I was just as resourceful as I could. But there's no one in this industry that could actually help you do this because there weren't there was hardly anyone doing it. Right. And, and that's why now it's 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 completely what we realize is that we need to create this for people so that so that they could have these resources because what I went through the last six years was very difficult. Yep. Right. So I have three hotels. We're building a staff of a couple dozen people. I had never managed teams this big. You know, when you're a lawyer, you, you, you learn habits that are not effective in team leadership right? and business operation. Mm -hmm. Law firms are some of the most antiquated businesses mm -hmm. and business models. And, and so those are the skills and, and things that I had to self-develop over the last six, seven years. So right now, anybody in the Airbnb business, anybody that wants to buy a hotel, yep. you know, and by the way, how to buy one, where should I look to buy one, where's the best place to get one, you know, you coach people on not only just if they have one, what to do, how to grow it, how to build it, but also people that are wanting to get into it. Yeah. Right, like I mean, at the end of the day, I always say success favors the prepared. Yeah. So like, if I want to do something, and I'm listening to you right now, I'm like, dude, well, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Well, that's another reason why it's like he and he's gonna keep going, but he got heavily into the coaching space now, so he coaches people, him and his wife, exactly what to do, to just be successful fast and not waste a dollar. I mean, dude, listen, like practicing on your own money gets really expensive really fast. You know what I, I'm saying? I I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in mistakes mm -hmm. and things that I shouldn't have done things I you know and look no one uh, no one well, I didn't this, have uh, this program problems. didn't exist it didn't exist so it's called trial and error exactly yeah. and, and so that's why I had to burn years, it's called spray and pay years of my life trial and error but now the lessons that I learned you know we talk about you can look at the things that have happened to you in your life mm -hmm. and I can look back and say damn man I wasted years doing messing this up messing this up well, that was your college exactly yeah it was your, your your entrepreneur college your, your university yep and by the way listen I, I do want to tell you something uh entrepreneur college is to me find someone that has been where you want to go and then ask them how did you do that yeah. and then if they're willing to teach you well then you pay them it's like college yeah and then now you know and then now you do it yeah you know and it's pretty crazy because man when i was younger if you wanted to be good at something or wanted to learn something, um, I mean, like I'm older than you. I mean, you're 36, right? Yeah. I'm 44, so about eight years. But I'm sure you heard that saying, you know, take a rich man to dinner, you know, see how long you can keep him there, you know, get him a five course meal and just ask him every damn question you can while he's there yeah. because that's the only way that you're gonna freaking learn. That's right. So growing up, it was like, there was a couple ways to learn. Uh, cassette tapes, yep. okay? Um, and I'm 44, but it was like cassette tapes, you know, then DVDs, then, you know, there wasn't really maybe a seminar once or twice a year yeah. that you could go to. And then you would hope something would be in there that you can learn. And then literally it was find someone, if you can find them who's successful and see if they'll let you take them out to dinner. Yeah. Okay. And then you buy their dinner and you literally ask them every freaking question you can to try to get as much information as fast as possible. There wasn't curriculums, coaching programs, training, mentorship, none of that crap existed. That's right. But we're in this era now that's super neat. So anybody watching this, just remember that, like turning decades into days is what we call it. Like how to do what most people couldn't do in three lifetimes and do it in three months. Yeah. Well, how you do it is you get together with the coach and you learn. Yeah, and, and I'm huge on that. And yeah. so I, I never think that I'm too good or that I've, I've stopped learning. Dude, I got millions left to spend. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I tell my wife, I say every day I'm looking for somewhere where I can pay to invest in myself because my, my self-investment is my har highest ROI ever. If you have a business, you're thinking about the ROI of the business. But dude, the ROI on you is 20 million times higher than the business. Exactly. But you're the one that's gonna run the business to get the ROI out of it. That's right. So yeah, like, because, but know, most people don't think about that. No, they're, they like, they're like, oh, I can't self-develop because I gotta put all my money in my business. You're like, dude, the reason why your business isn't making any money is because you don't put any money into yourself. Exactly. 
right? So like you, you've you hacked it. You and your wife are on this journey right now. You guys are like a spaceship just taking off. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Well, uh, Maxwell talks about the, the lids to leadership. And, mm -hmm. and one of the lids is, is the leader of an organization. Their lid caps the, hit their organization. That's right. right? Every, everything the, falls and rises. An organization will only be as effective as the leader. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and that's what I've realized, and especially a couple of years ago, my, my health wasn't in a great place. My relationship wasn't in a great place. It, it wasn't as good as I thought it could be. And, How and long have you and your wife been together? Year and a half. And so a lot of the last two years and making major transformation, it's because we're doing it together, mm -hmm. which is another really powerful. Does she kick your ass? Oh, a hundred percent. Right. You've had that relationship. We, yeah. cause we, you know, we, we consider you and Jackie mentors. And so we, we follow your relationship and listen to you guys. And yeah, she just, and, she you, beats you know, my Jackie butt beats you. Uh -huh. right? in, in a good way. Right. Yeah. Like and, she, she loves me so much that she wants to make sure that I max my potential out every day. Right. And so she's my coach and a good coach will coach you hard. Nobody forgets a weak coach. Nobody remembers a weak coach. People always remember the hard coaches. In fact, in fact, the reason that you and I ended up connecting was not because I reached out to you mm -hmm. because she knew that I needed to get together with you. It's a good woman. dude. And so she's the one that reached out. I think that's and, why I like her so much. Yeah. 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 Plus and, she's and, a savage. Well, she's a total savage. I mean, she yeah, just ran she a marathon just, just for, just cause she wanted to. Yeah, I saw it. That was awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, she's a she's a beast. So you know to so we talk about having it all and and being able to so self development is so critical because you're what I've realized is that your organization and especially if you're looking to scale Airbnb business, going to hotels, hospitality, these are complex businesses. I talk about the hotel business. You have to be effective in real estate. You have to be effective in in teams. You have a housekeeping team. You have a maintenance team. You mm -hmm. have a, a front desk team. You have to be world class in marketing. You have to have a sales process. Facts. So these are complicated businesses with really like a bunch of businesses within a real estate business. Mm -hmm. That's why hotels are the riskiest. They're one of the riskiest real estate assets because it the hotels rise and fall based on how effective. The leadership of the hotel is yeah and and the systems and processes that's right which you teach all that right that's exactly right yeah so systems and processes is how we built our company and yep. truly me being the leader and my wife being the leader is how we built our business yeah and like dude if you take the leadership out you have nothing you have nothing and and, and i tell people like when we coach when we coach our clients you have you have the skills the actual skills the systems the processes of the business mm -hmm. and then you have the leadership piece and and the development piece and oftentimes yeah we can come in and and there's always something there's always things that we can fix to get your revenue get your sales to the next level and we do that but i tell people the bigger piece the bigger piece is actually when we start talking about how you need to self-develop or how you need to be more effective with your team and develop your team yeah because until you change nothing changes so right. like if you're the same person and all of a sudden they're going to get these new strategies that same person they're not going to freaking create all this opportunity. All this isn't going to happen. Like right. you got to become a new person. That's why in two months you and your wife have self-developed so fast. It's absolutely insane. Because we believe it, and we, like I said, we don't preach. We don't preach anything that we don't do ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we we have we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and a lot of time and in, in moving cities to be around the people that develop us, right? And and that's why you know we work with you and we're close proximity to the Elliott Group because we believe that you're one of the most world-class development companies. Mm -hmm. And, and so we want to be a, we want to be a part of that and a proximity to that. Well, guys, this is super important. Number one, Kevin's a good friend of mine. His wife's amazing. Obviously. Um, I love that they have courage to attack. I love that. That's like super important. Um, a lot of people, they have the opportunity. Um, you guys have the same opportunity. Um, and they just don't get themselves better, so the opportunity doesn't do anything. Um, or um, people literally are afraid to grow um, in their marriage, in their health, and all these other areas. It, it's full circle. So you know, yeah. I just want to tell, like, I see you guys operating at this really high level together, and I think that's the reason why I like 
sharing you with my audience is because you guys are really good coaches. Yeah. You know, and, and I think if you're listening to this right now, you need to maybe even just close your eyes and, and think about what is it that you really want mm -hmm. and, and what, what is holding you back right now? Because I think a lot of times we have, we talked about earlier about the outside forces, the parents, the friends, toxic relationships, mm -hmm. They're, they're putting into you, speaking into you the things that they think they want for you. But, but, but is it really what you, what you want for you? And I think a lot of people, if you're thinking right now, you're stuck in being uncomfortable, but comfortable. So you're in the middle right now and you, you're not so uncomfortable that you don't want to change. Mm -hmm. And so I think if, if someone's honest with themselves right now and you're listening to this and you can take an audit of yourself and be real honest and think, do I have another level and do I really have what I want right now? Am I willing to take action, major, massive action, yep. to get what I really want? Because well, that, those conversations are tough. First, the conversations with yourself, but then, then it's, who am I gonna be around? Where do I need to be? And then we're talking about if you wanna make major transitions in life, that the changes need to happen. And if you wanna be in the top 1%, then there's sacrifices, things that need to be done that are you willing to do that? Well, important that everybody knows, number one, in order to get what you want, you got to fight for what you want because nobody's going to freaking give it to you. So you got to get out there and you got to fight for it. Guys, you met my good buddy Kevin today. Okay, next time we get on here, I told his wife, I go, all three of us are getting on here yeah. because I think she runs the show, to be honest with you. She does. But but I will tell you this. They're amazing together. I wanted you guys to meet Kevin. Kevin, if they want to follow you on social media, where how do they find you on Instagram? Yeah, you can find me at, at Kevin Reardon. At Kevin Reardon. You guys go DM him. You can message him. There's going to be a number below right now. You guys can just text that. Very simple. You can reach out to him, ask him any question you want. Um, guys, it's a hot time in life right now to self-development, to grow. Um, reach out, connect with him, tell him what's on your mind, and I promise you he will push and help you. So, guys, I love you. I appreciate you, Kevin. We're going to kill it, bro. And the next year, so. it's going to be absolutely psycho. I see him blowing up and growing and, and, and scaling quickly, and I see what he's doing to his clients and changing their lives. So anything that's of value that I see in my life, I just want to share with all you guys all the time. So thanks for being with thanks us today, you. bro. Appreciate you. Love you guys. We'll see you guys in the next podcast. And as I promised, next time, I'm going to have his wife right here with me. We're going to tear this sucker down. See you next time. Let's get it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. Everybody wants a piece now. Don't rest in peace.